Okay, this is an example of the pop-up menu within its own movie clip. The other movie that I made, the pop-up menu was completely on the stage's timeline. In this case, this is a movie clip within the stage, and the movie clip is telling the stage which frame to navigate to. So if I open this up and close it, it's actually re-navigating back to the home frame. If I go to another frame, it goes to red. If I go to the blue, it's going to go to blue. A subtle difference in relationship to how this works, as soon as I click on the destination button, it jumps immediately. In the first movie that I made, the jump occurs after the venue collapses. So here you can see if you have a quick eye, you can notice that this switched before this collapsed. The code is surprisingly minimal. Here in the main timeline, there's the first action is the stop, and then I've added this. This here is the secret to making this thing work. Uh, I'm using the word stage as a variable name. Uh, JavaScript doesn't use this uh, variable name, so I'm co-opting it from ActionScript and from Animate. And this, while I'm in the main root level, this is a reference to the canvas. So in essence, what I'm doing is I'm assigning the value of the canvas to this variable stage. So now the word stage and canvas are synonymous. For some reason, canvas didn't always work on different versions. So this is the best way that I came uh, to solve this. Uh, I probably should use a different name because eventually stage could potentially be used by CreateJS. But uh, for now, just to avoid any confusion, I think it's easier to understand the switch when we use a word that we can relate to in relationship to the GUI that we're working in. So the next frame in here, I'm going to click over here. And by the way, while I'm on frame number one, you can see that I'm still in the home frame. And if I click on the next frame over here, you can see that that's the red frame. This has just got a simple stop, as do the rest of them. So uh, a stop is being generated, which is actually not necessary since the main code is telling it to go to and stop. But what was necessary is the frame label. And it doesn't matter where these frames are or what numbers they're, they're called. As long as I'm using frame labels, uh, I have to uh, uh, I can rather break away from uh, doing any kind of recalculation based on whether I'm on the zero frame or on the one frame. Okay, so inside the code, in the middle here, there's another stop. Nothing goes on over here. Notice that nothing is being generated over here. It just finishes the animation and then it bounces back to the beginning. And so when you click on the black, the button for the black is only set up to play. It's not set up to get, go anywhere. It All it does is play. It opens these up. And now when we reach here, the black button is set up both to play and also potentially to take me back to the, to the home scene. All of these are set up to take me to their colored. So if I click on the blue, it'll take me to the blue scene. Or I say scene. Uh, what I mean is blue frame. If I click on the green, it'll take me to the green frame and the red to the red frame. So they're set up to do that. And here's how the code works. So this is a little bit more complicated. It's not as straightforward to sort out, but uh, bear with me and we'll see if I can make some sense. OK, I'm going to ignore the black button for now. Uh, I'm going to just do the blue button and see if I can explain that a little bit easier. So. The instance of the button is still B underscore BTN. It doesn't have to be that. Of course, it can be anything you want to call it. The uh, event click handler here is uh, B again for blue. And it's calling this function name as this function over here. So it has to be exactly the same. It's telling the timeline of the movie clip to just start playing. And it's also, as soon as it starts to play, it's going to tell the stage to go to the blue frame label. Now, this play begins when it's in the middle. This play doesn't occur over here because it's tucked away underneath the black button. 
But once it gets to the middle in here, that's where the play is going to occur. So it's being programmed or it's been programmed so that when it gets to the middle, if you click on the button, it'll play. It'll keep on chugging along the timeline. And before it leaves, it's going to go to the blue frame. And it's also going to reverse this value. So B is switching to whatever it was. And it came in as being true. It's now being set to false. So here's what, what would happen. You would click in here. This is false. And presumably, you're going to click and get into through the black button. So in the black button, as long as this condition is not true, it will not go to the home scene or the home frame. So this is going to be ignored on the first initial click because this is coming in as false. Once it's been clicked, the B value is reversed to true. That would take us to the middle of the movie clip. And now the black button has an extra feature that it didn't have before. When we click on it, it'll take us back to the home frame. And then once it leaves the click, after you've clicked it, this gets switched back from true back to false. And the reason for that is because the, the movie clip is going to collapse. And I don't want the value of B to be true while it's in the collapse state. I want it to be false. That way this won't play. Over here on the colored buttons, if I click on the black, that opens it up. The black is now set to true. If I click on the black, and I won't, but if I click on the black, it'll take me back to the home frame. But if I click on any of the other colors, it's going to take me to the other color. But I don't want to leave this in the state of being true, because then the frame is going to the uh, movie clip is going to collapse, and the value is true. Then if I come back and click on this guy over here, it's going to instead of taking me to the middle of the frame, it's going to take me to the home frame, and it starts to look a little confusing. So all of the buttons, after you've clicked on them from the middle button, reset the Boolean value back to false. And it's a, it's, it's a little difficult to understand. It's about positive and negatives and reversals. But it does work. And that's the setup. So what that does, if we test this in here, black. It's actually taking me back home. You just can't tell because it's already there. And if I click over here, now it's turned to red. If all I want the black to do right now is to open up. I don't want it to take me anywhere. Now that it's opened up, I want it to take me somewhere. So now the B is worth true. So since this is true, clicking on here is going to both play and take me to the home frame. If I open this up, and I click over here, right now B is set to true. If I click on here, it's going to take me to the home frame. If I click over here, it closes up, and B was set back to false. So here, B is set to false. First click opens it up only. Here, I'm going to click in here, and B is set to true now, since the whole thing opened up. Closing it sets B back to false, and it sends me to the green frame. Since this is false again, that'll open up and not go immediately to the home frame. So um, that's the setup for this. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'm going to generate a different type of animation. I'm going to use this spiral from Adobe Illustrator. And I'll be doing a different interface. So instead of having this do a collapse, an accordion type collapse, I'm going to have it uh, do a spiral. Uh, maybe you got enough out of this one to sort it out. Uh, but uh, if you want to see some other variations that you might consider for how you want to animate this, I'm going to give you at least the spiral animation. Uh, the animations really are completely up to you. If you wanted to use a motion guide, if you wanted to scale, if you wanted to uh, uh, do rotations, uh, it's all up to you. Any kind of animation you can imagine is applicable to this particular process. Uh, the only downside to this is that you're locked into the same animation. You can't move it 
and have it do things differently without adding additional code or other variations. But the simplicity, I think, is uh, worth learning about anyway. Okay, we'll catch you on the next movie, and we'll start from scratch.